everyone and welcome. Uh, my name, like uh, Tamara said, I'm Ryan Hazen. I'm a sales executive with Moodle now, although I was raised as a learning designer. So don't, don't hold the sales executive against me just yet. Uh, but I'd like to talk a little bit about Moodle Workplace. Um, administrative magic for every organization. So let's go ahead and get started. Now we all know Moodle is the digital infrastructure for your schoolhouse, right? Moodle provides the online building, if you will, the school building. You know, it, it, it contains the front office, it contains the grade book, it contains the ramps and the elevators for accessibility, right? It takes care of all of the infrastructure, whereas the learning designers, the teachers, and the subject matter experts put their content into this infrastructure. So just because the classrooms are all sort of the same shape doesn't mean that they're all doing the same thing, right? Now with a schoolhouse, you have a very particular direction that uh, learning flows. It goes from a teacher downward to the students. Very rarely in a traditional school do we think of teacher, or students teaching teachers, although as a learning designer I would argue we should do that more often. Uh, but in a traditional schoolhouse, uh, we have this sort of unidirectional relationship between the teachers and the students. Now this is what it looks like. You've all probably seen Moodle before. Uh, I hope if you're here, you've seen Moodle at some point. Uh, but this is what it looks like online. You know, we've got our Moodle infrastructure and then we have our um, learning materials, our courses here. Uh, this is a, a, a company I made up, Kentla Outdoor Gear. Uh, I'm from Montana, we spend a lot of time in the outdoors, so uh, my, my made up company makes outdoor gear. Um, and this is our infrastructure inside of the classroom, right? Pretty basic, we've got you know the course index on the left hand side and, and things in the middle. So this is what we're used to thinking about Moodle as the infrastructure, the schoolhouse that exists online for students to come in and learn. Now what Moodle Workplace is, is we've taken that Moodle schoolhouse infrastructure and we've built corporate oriented features on top of that infrastructure. So if you've never used Workplace before, but you're a Moodler and you start using Workplace, it will look familiar to you. You will it automatically know where the administrative menu is. You'll understand how the courses work. You'll understand how enrollments work. All of that basic infrastructure is still there, but we've added a few features on top of that basic schoolhouse. Now, I'm gonna talk about those features today and kind of explain why, well, I think that they're useful both in, in traditional education and in corporate education as well. So I'm gonna talk about how these can benefit organizations of all types today. So, um, but first it's gonna benefit to talk about how we kind of flip the script in corporate education. Um, in the corporation, you have folks up at the top, you have people that work for them, you have people that work for those people, and you have people that work for those people. And if you're big enough, you have people that work for those people and people will work for those people and all on down the chain, right? Now our goal with corporate education generally is upskilling. We want quality uh, members of our organization to improve their education so they can move upwards through this organization. That's a tremendous value add to any corporation. You know, you have people who understand your culture, understand your product, understand your sector, and you want to train them so that they can move upward through the organization. Now, the other thing we need to understand is that there's this downward mentor-mentee relationship happening at the same time. So even though we want to move folks upward, we have to understand that you can be both a teacher and a student at the same time. Just like somebody on that second tier is both an employee and a manager of someone below them at the same time. Now Moodle Workplace takes this into account and allows us to play both of these roles. So instead of just being a traditional classroom where there's a teacher and students, everyone is switch hitting all the time. And that is what a real lifelong learning community looks like. We're both teaching and learning, which improves everybody's uh, upskilling all at the same time. So um, I'm going to start, I'm going to run through the, the features of Moodle Workplace that we've added on top of the Moodle core uh, product. And then I'm going to talk about how they uh, benefit that um, uh, multi-directional 
uh, relationship between teachers, students, employees, managers, mentors. Um, so first of all, we've got multi-tenancy. Here's my login page for my Kentla Outdoor Athletic Gear um, group. And here's my uh, dashboard. We looked at that earlier. Now, Moodle Workplace allows us to have multiple identities, multiple subsites within a single site for our different sides of our organization. For example, let's say Kent Laguerre decides that they want to move into France, and they have different requirements for education for their employees in France. Their login page might look like this, and their dashboard might look like this. Likewise, if we come to Spain, we might look like this, and we might have a dashboard that looks like this. Uh, finally, you know, maybe we go to the UK as well, and here's a whole other way that our site might look. Now, the real benefit of this is not just rebranding so that we see different types of, of our organization. Now, in this example, there are different countries, right? This is a geographical, regional tenancy situation, but a lot of the organizations that we work with will use Moodle internally for compliance training, uh, development, you know, the training that you're required to take for whatever place that you're in legally to be in the workplace. And then they have an external uh, uh, tenant that provides their clients products, you know, what they sell. And with multi-tenancy, you can do both of those things and keep those users separate from one another. Now, um, but the real benefit is the downward delegation of administrative responsibility through the organization. So uh, each of these different tenants can have a different tenant admin that is sort of like a junior administrator inside of the site. So you can have folks that are in Spain, you can have an administrator that's managing just their users, their learning, what's going on in their tenant without affecting the others. This way, that person at the very top of your organization does not have to do the day-to-day -day work of managing users' allocations and enrollments and so forth in their particular region. Uh, this is really beneficial with particularly large organizations because your top-level IT admin is not going to have time to do this. Okay? You want to you delegate this downward through the organization. And this delegation of administrative and oversight responsibility is going to kind of be a theme here. We're taking what the administrator has typically done and giving it down to people further and further down in the organization. Um, another uh, feature, so there's one feature, multi-tenancy. Another feature is programs, or our ability to arrange courses in different pathways. Um, for example, here in my imaginary Kent Laguerre, uh, you know, sports retailer, um, we have three courses that we have to go through in order. Employee introduction, customer interactions, and beginning your shift. And then in this area here, we have a set of courses, a subset that's a cycling product specialist or a paddle sport specialist. So after you do your first three, you have to choose either cycling or paddle sports to special in, specialize in. So you uh, uh, can, we've got it set up so you have to complete it all in order and then under specialization courses, you have to complete at least one of these two. So we're giving the learners agency here in creating this program. Now, programs are great, but where they really hit the road is in certifications. Now, this is a certification setup screen. Um, up at the top, we've selected that Kentla New Employee Program. And then we have dates. So the certification dates, they're going to start when they're allocated. So that's when they can begin learning. Uh, the due date is one month after they're allocated. And then it expires one year after all allocation. So a certification takes a program and puts it on a timed cadence. So think about uh, we need our new employees on board within a month, and then we need them to re-up their training with recertification after a year. So in this case, we set up the same certification to say one week before the previous certification expires, we're going to reset their course progress, archive it, and so the user is going to experience that program again like they've never done it before. All of their progress will be reset, so they have to go through it again. You can also choose to give them a different program. Now, where this really makes sense in the corporate environment is every year we do cybersecurity training. Okay? Cybersecurity is a moving target. 
it, we need to update you year after year after year. And instead of having to manually re-enroll people in these programs, we can set it to happen on a cadence so that you're automatically reopened and maybe we select a new program and you get uh, training that's relevant to that particular time. So a program is our suite of courses and a certification is the cadence on which our employees or our students or our teachers have to do these, uh, have to do these trainings. When I was an administrator for a, a small college in Helena, Montana, we um, had to have our staff and our faculty take trainings on how to interact with minors, on how to treat each other in the workplace. Cybersecurity, we have to do those year over year. And instead of having to re-enroll them all with a giant CSV upload, which is what I did, um, we can automate it now and take that responsibility off of the administrator to do this manually. Um, so again, certifications are program driven. They offer timelines and they offer recertification so that we can take those administrative uh, tasks off of the desk of the people who have other things to do. And over there on the right hand side is a, uh, a little picture of what a student might see in a certification. So, um, and if you have any questions about any of these, I'll be happy to do a live demo for you on my, my uh, laptop any other time, you know, during the conference. Um, organizational structure. Now, I love this. So we've gone through, let's see, three features so far. Multi-tenancy, programs, and certifications. Organizational structure is our next one. Um, again, I'm going to pull this graphic back up because this becomes relevant now. Um, in this particular relationship, we have a team lead and we have team members. We want this team lead to keep track of their team members' progress. But we don't want to bother our administrator with giving them reports all the time. So we've built into Moodle a way for them to have oversight of their employees directly through the LMS. So the team lead can allocate users to programs and certifications. So let's say that I am a manager in my Kentla retail store. I identify an employee who's got management potential. I can actually allocate them to the management program or certification myself and let them upskill so they can, they can say, okay, I'm ready to become a manager. It's, it's, it's time, I've done the work ahead, ahead of time. Um, I can view reports. So when my team members are successfully completing their certifications on time, as they always do, I can congratulate them and say, great work. And if it so happens that someone doesn't complete it on time, I can know that as well. And I can give them support to get to that certification or program. And then I can receive notifications. So if my team members take too long to complete their employee onboarding, I get a notification that tells me that they have gone over the due date. I can then approach that employee and help them access the site, clarify what the expectations are, anything that they might need. Um, this is what the uh, report looks like for a team manager. So uh, I've got these learners here. And I can see that they haven't accessed in 215 days, so that's a pretty long time. I might need to get them involved in the, the online learning here. Uh, but I have red dots next to two and four. These are people who haven't completed what they need to do. So here's learner test two. I can see that my certification number four is 0% completed and it's overdue. Same thing with program courses one through five. So I get a really quick view of what my employee is doing in the LMS. And I don't have to get a report from the administrator. I don't have to ask anyone for this. This is actually on the Teams tab in Moodle Workplace. So I can see it directly in the LMS. There's also, this is, um, I cut off the send message and view profile. There's send message and view profile buttons just below here so that I can directly message the student if I see something that's, uh, that they're off course with in, the, uh, in their learning. Um, okay, so that, that was, I think, four of the things. The last one we talked about was organizational structure. Now we're going to go to dynamic rules. This is something that I would have loved as a Moodle administrator in any sector at any time, all the way through my history of being a Moodle administrator. These are simple if-then statements that you can create via a user interface. 
Um, so for example, a dynamic rule is a condition and an action, an if and a then, right? So some of the example conditions, you know, I can say, well, if you have this profile field or you've completed this program or you're a member of this cohort or you have this competency or badge. So over there on the right hand side is a picture of the user interface to do this. You simply click the user profile field. Uh, for example, if that's what I wanted to do, it'll appear on the right hand side. You select which user profile field and then you type in what you want to have from that profile field. In this example, I've selected a user profile field called position, and I've said if your position profile field contains Kentla department employee, that's it. So if you're a, a, Kentla, department, blah, a Kentla department employee, um, then I can take an action based on that. In this case, I've chosen to allocate you to the Kentla new employee certification. So every time we add a new user with the profile field value, Kentla department employee, they're automatically going to be allocated to this certification. No matter when I add them, no matter how they're added, if there is a user with this profile field, they are going to be added to this uh, certification. Now, this is great on its own, but it's especially great when you've integrated with an HR system and you have lots of people coming in. That way your administrator doesn't have to worry about it. They're just automatically all allocated to what they need to, they need to do based on that profile field. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about HR integrations later. Um, and here's a list of all my dynamic rules. You can have many of these, and I know this is very hard to see in this room, uh, so I'll explain it a little bit. Um, the conditions, you can have multiple conditions. So for one, I have if your profile field position is department employee and your profile field department is Kentler Retail, then I want to allocate you to Kentler Certification and I want to assign you a job and I'm going to send you a notification as well telling you that you've been. So you can stack up conditions and actions and single rules so they can do multiple things all at once. Um, site reports. All right, so that was dynamic rules. I'm going to move on to the custom reporting interface. Um, what you see on the right hand side here is a screenshot of a report. Uh, we've got people that are overdue, people that are suspended, and people that have completed this certification in this report. Um, the great thing about site reports is that they're customizable, exportable, and email schedulable. Um, I'll talk about each of these a little bit here. The customizable reports is, and did anybody ever use configurable reports? Anybody ever use that plugin? Did anybody ever struggle with writing the SQL for the configurable reports? Because I did. Some people shaking their heads, you guys are better at SQL than I am. Um, but for me, this is great because this is a graphic user interface that I can put in fields. Like for example, if I want a column that tells me the status of someone's certification, I click the button on the left hand side and it appears on the right hand side. So I am adding those columns and then I can rearrange the columns so I can create my report from any of these items that are in the database over here on the left hand side. Uh, likewise, I can put conditions on. In this case, I've said I only want people who are uh, in the, uh, I only want to see certifications that are the new employee certification that I've been talking about this whole time. And then finally, uh, I can schedule them. Now, this is a game changer for me as an administrator. I often had people from our, uh, when I was, uh, again, when I was working at a college, I had folks from the, the leadership who said, I need to see a report on how people are engaging with Moodle. And I could create that from the logs. There's, I could create that from statistics. I could sort of get, and, and I, I could do the work and we could do really specific reporting and that's great. But in this case, I can build that report in custom reports and then I can say, I want to start on the 26th of September I want to send this report every month. I want to send it to somebody that's a particular audience, and I want them to view the report data as someone. 
And then I can customize a message below, and I can say, just go ahead. And so I could choose to export it as a PDF, as an Excel file, as a comma-separated values file, and I can set it up to email on a cadence to the person that needs that report. So if my CEO wants to see how many of my employees are completing our new employee certification every month, I can automate the provision of a report to them by email. They don't even have to log into Moodle to get this. Um, and that's, uh, that's tremendous for any administrator, but particularly in the, in the corporate environment, where you might have multiple reports going to multiple different departments that have multiple different columns in them. Um, so you can have Moodle sending out these uh, reports to all sorts of different stakeholders with different needs. Uh, and then, um, finally, there's a reports block. This is one of my favorite sort of little hacks. Down here in the right-hand side, this is back to the report uh, builder. And down on the right-hand side, we have a condition called user relationship to the report viewer. Here I've chosen that I want the report viewer to see only the information that relates to themselves. Okay? Now I'm going to put a block on the front page that looks like this. This is the report providing that student with their progress on these particular items. So the block on the dashboard is going to be different data for each user. Uh, you can also get really complex here. Like I've added a lot of material about this new employee program that they're in. So Kentland Learner number one here is seeing that they were allocated on this date, it's due on this date, it's open, there's no end date set, the last time they accessed it, at what time, and so forth. Um, so I can actually create customized report blocks for anything that I can make in that uh, report builder, and I can put them on the dashboard or in the right-hand column or, or anywhere that's necessary. So um, that's one of my, my favorite sort of little taking all these features and putting them together and making them work for our organization. Um, and lastly, uh, this is not necessarily a feature of Workplace. We can integrate an HR system with Moodle Core as well. But to, to wrap it all together, I might have an HR system over here on the right-hand side, and I want to know from that HR system what the user profile fields are. So what's their employee role? What's their department? What uh, other things have they completed before? These, these sorts of informations. And if I send those into Moodle, and I'm getting it directly from the HR system, I'll know what department and what position they have. So I can drive that dynamic rule where I say, if you have this department and this position, I want to enroll you in this certification, or I want to allocate you to this program. Um, so that from creating a user in HR, we can automate them all the way into the training that they need, and then we can track whether they completed that training and automate it all the way back into the HR system. That is tremendous, a tremendous set of features, and it offers tremendous value, not just for corporations, which is clearly what it's built for, uh, but also for um, higher ed and K-12. And one thing that I forgot to mention that I want to bring into account here is this, um, let me find my way back here, organizational structure in higher ed, if I had had this when I was a Moodle administrator, I would set up organizational structure so that academic advisors are uh, department leads for the students that they're in their department so that academic advisors could log directly into Moodle and see their students' progress across their courses. This is one of those problems that as a learning designer and a consultant, I've seen a lot of times that higher education asks for. and. Um, in Moodle Workplace, the solution's already built and there. So even though it's called Workplace, uh, I think it has applications in multiple different sectors, and you know we've we've seen that as we've deployed it for lots of different clients, uh, both uh, in the U.S. Uh, and abroad. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, thank you all for attending. Um, I think we have time for questions. If anybody has questions, I'd love to answer them. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Um,
Um, I'm just curious, when you guys sell a workplace, are you training the customer on how to use these features or are you setting it up for them? Um, well, for Moodle services, uh, we do both and either. It really depends on what the uh, client needs. Workplace is also available from multiple other partners, uh, and so each of us have a different approach, but typically we're training, I can at least speak from my experience when I was a learning designer, my priority was to train the organization so that they could achieve these goals on their own, and as their needs grow and change, they have the ability on board to go ahead and do that without needing to seek outside assistance. Yeah, we want to empower educators to improve the world, that's the, yeah.